It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Babe, this is not a drill. We lost power. They're, they're, they're coming after us. Okay, food, food. We need food. We need food. Uh, we could be out there for years, baby. We need some kind of entertainment. <laughs> Gotta stay entertained. Don't want to go crazy out there. Who wants to live in a world where you can't self host your own services? All right, babe. Grab the dogs. Meet me at the coordinates on the back of the Olive Garden to go menu. Come on, we practice this. Quick, let's move, let's move, come on. All right, so funny intro aside, we will actually be taking our off-grid setup to somewhere off-grid. And when I say off-grid, in this tense, I mean off the electrical grid. So we will be connected to cellular internet. We won't be having regular cable or fiber internet. So we will be utilizing the Anchor 533 power station to run all of our hardware. And we will be utilizing my iPhone hotspot for internet connections. So we are heading to the location now. We will set everything up to where I can host my services from essentially within the woods and access them anywhere in the world, um, beamed directly to the forest. So I will meet you guys at the campsite. Ah, <sighs> well. Welcome to the battle station. This is where we're going to set up everything. And let me reiterate, we are off grid, no electrical power whatsoever, no extension cords on the ground. We are working off of mother nature and uh, science from Anchor. So first step is to get everything physically connected to power and get a hotspot going with connections to our devices using the uh, hotspot on my iPhone. So let's actually do that. Like I said, we will be using the Anchor 533. It has 400 watt hours of power, which should be enough for the low power system we have here. So the first thing is this little hotspot. This is from GLINet. This is their slate. I can't remember the exact name, but what it's going to do is take the hotspot signal from my phone and turn it into essentially an actual router that we can use and utilize these uh, gigabit RJ45 ports to where we can connect actual hardware. Uh, from there, we will be using my Zima board. I just put up a video on that. If you're interested, it is a really tiny x86 based server or micro server, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a computer. And this will serve to act as our tunneling device as well as hosting a website. So for starting, let's just go ahead and get this set up. Uh, first step, let's plug in the Zima board. We are using the 12 volt plugs on the anchor. You do have two 12 volt barrel connectors as well as a uh, standard car cigarette lighter. Do with that what you will, but we will be using the barrel plug to go directly from the anchor to the Zima board, boom. Then we need to power our router. And again, the Anchor has three USB-A ports that have 36 watts of max power. This thing won't be using anywhere close to 36 watts. Neat. Then we want to hook up our iPhone to the router. So standard USB. Uh, there is USB on the back of this device. You can use this as a regular router. You can plug in a hotspot like this. You can use it as a repeater and get the Wi-Fi signal directly from your hotspot if you want, but this is just easier because it is hardwired and uh, it charges the phone. So that is plugged in. Next step is to plug the router utilizing these gigabit ports, one from here and one directly to the Zima board. So the Zima, Zima, the Zima board now has networking and on. We are using 11 watts. So if you look at the screen here, you can see we're using uh, 11 watts, which should give us at 100% 38 hours of uh, running this setup, which is absolutely bonkers. 
let's get everything set up. I will jump in. We also will be running a monitor uh, to show you guys what is going on. So I will connect that. And once we're booted in, I will show you guys what's going on. All right, everything is set up and working. We have the iPhone connected to the router, which is using its hotspot to connect to the outside internet world. Then that is connected directly to the Zima board, which is running here. I know you can't see it. This is running here, running Linux Ubuntu desktop. And we're using about 14 watts, giving us around 28 hours of just using this nonstop, which is crazy. So I am actually also connected to the router over Wi-Fi, and I am going to walk you through uh, what this router setup looks like. And uh, it's honestly pretty impressive. So this was only like, I think $70. Here is the home screen. And you can see that we are set up in tethering mode. You also have the ability to use it as a regular router, connecting it to uh, WAN using an ethernet cable. You can use it as a repeater, meaning that we are getting an existing Wi-Fi connection and having that router repeat the function. And then you can also plug in a 3G or 4G modem directly to it. So obviously we are in tethering mode and it is working perfectly fine. We are getting an IP address. We can browse the web. I will run a speed test because I'm sure you guys are wondering what the internet speeds look like out here in the country. Okay, and let's run a speed test. I'm sure we're going to get really fast speeds. Oh yeah, that is, whoo, we're blazing out here. 11 mega, 12 megabits, ooh, 13, 14. So I never said this was gonna be fast. Obviously, this is not uh, a functional display or a, uh, a useful display of this technology. This is more of like, can you do it? Not should you do it? But yeah, 15 down, four up, not the best, but I've seen worse. So yeah, from here, you got your basic uh, router functionality. You can modify the SSID and password and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can see the clients that are connected and here you go, those are the clients. Upgrade, firewall, uh, you can open ports if you want. Now, I've done this for testing. You do not need to open ports the way we are exposing it. We are going through a Cloudflare tunnel, which will not need ports. And if you're wondering why we're using Cloudflare tunnel and not just one of the other techniques I've shown using like Nginx reverse proxy, uh, that's because when you are using a hotspot is essentially behind a carrier grade NAT, meaning that you don't have a real public IP to expose to your DNS server. So you have to use a Cloudflare tunnel. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, moving on to our Zima board, which is running Ubuntu desktop as well as Casa OS. I did a video specifically on the Zima board. I will link that up here, if you want to check it out, is a pretty cool low powered x86 board. But here you can see our Casa OS instance running. We have a couple of services. We have PhotoPrism and SyncThing. We will be using PhotoPrism to test out the functionality of exposing one of our services to the outside world from nature. So not only is our Zima board hosting the services here, it is also running the Cloudflare tunnel service. So I'm not gonna go into a huge in-depth how-to on setting this up, that may be a future video, but you can follow the Cloudflare tunnel setup guide that they have. It's pretty good. Their documentation is pretty on point for that and got me set up in about 30 minutes, but I will walk you through the basics here. So I am SSH in to here and I will walk you through kind of the setup. So the first thing you need to do is download the Cloudflare D service and run that on your system. Next, you're gonna to wanna to set up a tunnel. Now make sure in Cloudflare that you have tunneling enabled. Then you're going to install the tunnel and create the tunnel on your device. And once you do that, it is going to make the direct connection back to Cloudflare, giving you essentially the tunnel to do all your network trafficking from Cloudflare servers directly to your device in the middle of the woods. Now I'll go in and show you my configuration. So you're gonna have to set up a config.yaml and mine is pretty straightforward. So you set up your tunnel ID, you give the credentials file path that was created when you installed your tunnel. Then here you can set up ingress commands. And this is essentially almost like a reverse proxy. So when you set up like Nginx reverse proxy or Nginx proxy manager, 
you set up all the different routes you want coming in from the outside world and distributing that over your land. And in this case, this is our land. So here you can see if we're going to testing.mrballoonhands.com, we want that to route to our sync thing instance. And if we're going to photos.mrballoonhands.com, we want that linking to our photo prism instance. And then make sure your last service is a catch all. So I just use the 404 one. You can use whatever one you want, but you have to make sure that all right, so my camera shut off, but I think we're good now. It kind of overheated. That's what happens when you're in nature. But uh, as I was saying, make sure your config file is set up. And once it is, you can run the tunnel one of two ways. Uh, the easiest one when you're first testing it out is to run the basic command in the CLI using Cloudflare D tunnel run and then the name of your tunnel. I've named mine off grid. You can use the ID, but it's much easier to remember the remember, remember, remember the name than it is to remember the ID. And after running that, you can see everything is connected and good to go, but you're probably not going to want to run it this way because you're gonna want it to spin up automatically when you boot your device. So there is a way around that. There is a document to run this as a service. And honestly, it is really easy. I just installed it as a service. And now I can simply just say system CTL start Cloudflare D and now it is running as a service and it will run when I boot it up. So yeah, we are tunneled in and you can see now if I go to photos.mrballoonhands.com, we are connected over the network directly to my Zima board hosting photo prism all through a cloud flare tunnel. I tested this the other day and uploaded a picture directly from my hotspot and just like that it worked. We can actually test that now. So I'm going to take a picture. I will take a selfie. Perfect, what a great picture. So now we're going to go into Photo Prism. I'm going to select that lovely picture and let's send that to Photo Prism and I will send that to my off-grid instance, transferring. Now remember, <laughs> we don't have the best connection here, but 63% done, come on, I believe in you. 100%, boom. All right, it has been transferred. So now if we go to library and rescan, it should find it. Oh, it found something, index it. Again, this isn't gonna be the fastest thing. I never said this was the best option. And just like that, oh, what a great picture. That is just, wow. That, that's a cool dude right there. So yeah, obviously we have that working and I did say that we had another instance running. If we go to testing.mrballoonhands.com, we are in our sync thing instance and we can mess with that. So that is freaking crazy. Hosting a home lab, hosting services from the woods, as long as you have a uh, cellular connection, then you can do this with the help of the Anchor 533. And from now until April 10th, you can actually go get one of these with 15% off using cold, cold, <laughs> code Raid Owl Anchor for 15% off. Go check it out. Use my affiliate link down in the description below. So yeah, let's see how much power we have used while messing around with all of that. We are down to 99%. We are now using nine watts that the monitor is off and that will give us 43 hours. So leave this out here, uh, go home, have a nice uh, sleepy time, come back and uh, it'll still be running. Impressive. You probably saw this thing behind me and wondering what the hell I'm doing with that. So while you're out in the woods in your home lab, uh, you're obviously not gonna be entertained by nature because Ew. you're gonna wanna play some games, aren't you? That's what we're gonna try to do. So let's set this thing up and uh, see if we can actually game off of the Anchor power station. So this isn't the most powerful machine. It has an i5-4590T, so it's a low power version of an i5 from yesteryear, as well as a GT1030, which should be enough to play your esports titles and uh, some emulation stuff. Again, this is where the router having gigabit connections comes in handy. You can plug directly from the router over to the PC. The Anchor also has a standard 120 volt AC power connection, which is how obviously we're going to power the computer. Okay, 
Everything is connected. Let's power it on. Oh, we forgot to turn it on over here. And boom, I hear fans. Okay, we spiked up to <laughs> 70 watts. Much more significant than the low powered system. And that is obvious. We are running a desktop level computer with a graphics card. So we're obviously gonna be draining this power bank at a much higher rate. So we're logged into Windows here. This is Ergonomics 101, I know. Let's boot up CSGO. And we're using about 80 watts of power right now. And that is with everything else, by the way. So we are still running our Zima board. We're still running the router, monitor, and our desktop system. So yeah, when I was little and my parents made me go outside because I was inside playing video games all day and they said, you have to go outside at some point. I don't think this is what they had in mind. I can't see anything. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope that, I hope, I hope the camera got that. Okay, but not that. This is, uh, this is 1080p high settings, by the way. And this is freaking clean, dude. Obviously, CSGO isn't a demanding title, but look at where we're at, man. Okay, how much power are we using while gaming? 101 watts, 104 watts. So you can see while we're actually utilizing the hardware, we're using quite a lot of power. And at 100 watts, it is estimating 3.8 hours. Luckily, uh, we have a little solution here. Boom, solar power. We can plug this directly into the DC in, utilizing the adapter that they give us to use the uh, cigarette lighter in your car. And let's walk over and take a look. Okay, and you can see, while it's not impressive, it is helping. So you can see we're down to 90 watts, and that is just a product of being out here in the woods with shade. Uh, this is a 100 watt panel. Technically, when I tested it out in direct open sunlight, I was pulling in about 50 watts. What are we at? 90, 89 watts. And when I unplug it, you can see we shoot up to about 107. So about 17 watts right now. If you were out in direct sunlight, it would help a lot more. But given the circumstances, it is at least helping. So yeah, quite impressive that the Anchor power station can handle all of this. Quite impressive that we can actually host a website and a web service directly from uh, the middle of nowhere, assuming you have a uh, cellular connection. But this isn't even plugged in. But yeah, like I've said before, do I recommend doing this? Absolutely not. Don't go to the middle of the woods and host your web server. But I didn't say this was practical. I did this to learn some things and honestly, for fun. And it was fun and I did learn some things. I learned how to set up a Cloudflare tunnel, which honestly is really cool because I know in the other reverse proxy videos that I've done, a lot of people said they are behind a carrier grade NAT and that they don't have a public IP. So this might be a useful configuration for you. And I honestly will do a dedicated video on Cloudflare tunnels. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down in the comments below. But I'm going to uh, get out of here before uh, people start walking by and wondering what the hell I'm doing. Let's pack up and I will meet you guys back at home. All right, it's been a few days now. So let's talk about the whole experience. Now, the goal was to see if we could host a small home lab with zero assistance from the electrical grid using the Anchor power station. So did we succeed? I believe so. Using the Zima board, our travel router, and the iPhone, we were able to create a Cloudflare tunnel which allowed us to expose our services to the outside world. And we were only pulling around 15 or so watts, which was giving us nearly a day and a half to two days of runtime. Assuming you get a couple of sunny hours every day, then you should be able to charge back up to full with a 100 watt solar panel bringing in around 50 to 60 watts. So in that respect, I do believe it was actually a success. Now, is this something I would recommend doing? Absolutely not. This was completely for fun and just a little project to see if I could do it and to test out the Anchor power station. Now, I know there are people out there who need something like this or just need to set up something similar. So I know this video wasn't a completely worthless venture. And I also learned how to set up a Cloudflare tunnel in the process. So again, not completely worthless. If I had to do this again, honestly, I'm not sure what I'd do different. The GL iNet router 
Paired with the Zima board was an awesome combination of utility and power efficiency. I guess you could always go with a larger power station, but I think the 533 I was using was a nice middle of the road option. Of course, all the products I used are linked down in the description below if you wanna try them out for yourself on your next project. If you wanna pick up the Anchor Power Station specifically, then you can get 15% off with coupon code RADOWANCHOR when using my affiliate link below up until April 10th. So definitely consider snagging one of those if you're in the market. All right, it is time for comment of the week. This one comes on my Photo Prism and PhotoSync video. You got a little taste of that in this one, but I recommend checking that out if you're looking for a self-hosted cloud photo backup solution. This comment comes from SLS Vagabond who says, great video. I just wanted to start looking into these kinds of solutions since I want to get rid of my 10 euro a month iCloud subscription. These seems to do exactly what I'm looking for. We'll install and test it out before I extend it to the wifey's phone for the ultimate user experience test. Yes, I do think PhotoPrism and PhotoSync makes an excellent combination to combat third-party cloud-based solutions for storing your photos. It is a little rough around the edges. They do have a good bit to work on, obviously adding multiple users to share a library would be awesome and maybe some basic editing features down the line. But for right now and the low price you have to pay, definitely worth checking out. But thank you for the comment, SLS Vagabond. All right, that is all I have for you today. I hope you learned something. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried something like this or if this video inspired you to take your home lab out for some bird watching or something. Speaking of birds, Okay, that's a terrible transition, but I want to give a shout out to my Patreons and my YouTube members. You are the first people I think about when I wake up in the morning and that wave of content creator stress hits me right in the face. You dudes are total Choco Tacos, but if you made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.